Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to talk about brush cleaning. Now I have just a bowl of water. This is to imitate my sink. And I have a cup of steamy hot water that's almost boiling. And I have some brush cleaner. Now this is the Master's Brush Cleaner. This is the one that smells faintly of lemon. I've used this one for since the 90s. Um, I don't break out from it and that's why I keep using it. So I am specifically just going to be talking about cleaning brushes for watercolor and acrylic. But if you want to know how to clean brushes for oil, you're going to want to use um, mineral spirits. And if you don't have that, you can use baby oil or Murphy's oil soap. And then you can wash them with soap and water and reshape them. So. This is the part of a brush. You have the wooden handle that's coated. It's sort of lacquer coated. You have a metal ferrule. This is a non-corrosive metal. And then you have the bristles. And the bristles are glued in and held by this metal ferrule. Now the bristles can be synthetic or they can be natural. And you want to do two different things. So for synthetic bristles, I'm just going to clean this one real quick. Here's my water. Here's my soap. Make sure I get lots of soap on my brush. And most of my brushes are pretty dirty. Um, when I watercolor, I don't always clean them after every single use. Sometimes I wait a couple weeks and just kind of rough clean them. And then I do a big thorough clean when I'm all done with the watercolor project. Now I am moving from the base of the bristles down and I am holding it down. What you don't want to do is you don't want to get tons of paint on your ferrule <clears throat> and you don't want water to sit in and get inside your ferrule. So when you're painting, don't store your paint brushes in a cup br bristle down. That will bend your bristles and reshape them and it'll loosen the glue that's in the ferrule. For the same thing, you don't want to store your bristles upright when you're done cleaning them because the water will run inside the ferrule and wreck the glue that's holding your bristles. So you want to lay them flat when you're done cleaning them. Now this one is a bit bent out of shape so what I'm going to do is I have a steamy mug and I'm going to try not to um, fog up my camera too much. I'm going to dip the bristles in there and it's not quite boiling. Um, it is incredibly hot so be careful not to burn yourself and you want to reshape synthetic bristles with boiling hot water, being very, very careful not to burn yourself. And once you get the shape you like and you're all done, you can lay it down. Okay, so I'm laying that one down to dry. Now, here is one of my natural bristles and I'm going to add a little soap here. And I'm going to clean from the base down. Now on this one, you cannot stick natural brushes with natural hair bristles in boiling hot water. You will wreck them. What you want to do is you want to grab some conditioner. And this is just the one I have. It's the conditioner you use on your hair in the shower. And you want to grab some. And you want to put the bristles in it. Now I have more than I need, but this is just to show you for a demo. And you want to reshape it using the conditioner. And what you do after you've reshaped it is you let it sit for a couple minutes. And after a couple minutes, you rinse the conditioner back out and it's reshaped. So think of natural hair bristles like your natural hair and think of synthetic bristles like <laughs> being rough with them and boiling them. It sort of melts them a little bit to kind of reshape them. So you want to be careful. And this is a very, very cheap craft brush. Um, and you can see it's very, very dirty. It's very stained. A lot of watercolors and pigments are highly staining. So don't be alarmed if your bristles don't go back to 
the pure tan color or white color they originally were when you first purchased them. And I'm just trying to get from the base down and make sure I'm getting all the pigment out. And again, this is a very, very inexpensive brush and that's fine. You can create all kinds of beautiful things with inexpensive, inexpensive brushes. Now I am dipping it in the boiling hot water which is not quite as boiling hot anymore because it's been sitting here, but you can still see um, a little bit that it's steamy. So I'm going to reshape him and leave him to dry. And once they are fully, fully dry and fully, fully clean, then I will put them standing upright in their jars. Let's do another synthetic one or another natural hair one. So this one, I believe, is Squirrel. And this is a very beautiful brush. I've only used it once. I do not have um, the confidence or the practice in this style of brush yet, but it does need to be cleaned. As you can see, I am pulling blue pigment out. And the one time I used it, I did not clean it all the way because I knew I wanted to do a brush demo with all kinds of brushes. So just making sure I'm getting all the pigment out. Trying to be gentle with these. You want your brushes to last, you know, ideally a couple years, depending on how prolific you are with your painting and your style. Let's get some conditioner. Some painting techniques are rougher than others. You really want to work the conditioner into all the bristles for your natural hair brushes, if that is something that you own. So I am going to fasten this one into a point like it originally was when I received it. And I'm going to let it sit. Now this one's been sitting for a minute, so I'm gonna rinse the conditioner out. Again, I have very tiny brushes. I work smaller. I don't typically work when I paint. It's very rarely over an A5 size, okay. And that one's all shaped and all done. And that one can dry and that one can wait. So that's why you're seeing all these super tiny brushes is because I work smaller. I don't typically go over A4 ever anymore. This one's super dirty. I just don't have the drying time or the storage space to work large. So it also has to do with how fast I can paint and create with layers and A5 is kind of my sweet spot. So Here we go. Just getting all that off. And this is another synthetic one. So I will reshape him. My cup of hot water is still steaming, but it's not quite burning to the touch. So it may not quite be as effective for shaping right now. Let's try and get this all on camera. I hope this video helps. I hope this gives you some tips and tricks. Um, you can also shape them wonky if you like. You can cut your brushes. If you don't have an angle brush and you want one, you can cut that. There's all kinds of things you can do with your brushes if you so choose. Just know that if you wash them after you work, they will last longer, especially with acrylic. When I paint with acrylic, which is very rarely, I always wash after every project because that seems to damage the bristles more so than the watercolor, leaving that on. And this one's in a fine shape, I think, for the most part. But while I have a cup of steamy water, I might as well, right? Okay. And I'm going to rinse the conditioner out of this one. Ooh, and it feels soft. <laughs> My conditioner is lavender scented. <laughs> I bet unscented probably is better, and I bet fully organic is probably the best. So there you go. This is how I clean and care for my brushes. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and I will talk to you later. Bye.